Okay. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Employee Happiness and Productivity, Learnings Across Pakistan. My name is Elise Valji. I'm a mental health counselor. I'm also the co-founder and operations director at Saya Health. We're a company that uses technology to increase access to mental health and well-being services, both for companies and educational institutions and actually also individuals. So we're having this conversation today to really raise uh, awareness around the importance of employee well-being. Um, I think rates of burnout are increasing day by day. They're actually alarming rates. Uh, people might be familiar with this, uh, how many employees are now facing burnout, especially in the pandemic. Um, other than that, I think this is a topic that's very close to organizations, it's very close to employers, because the employees' uh, well-being is directly correlated to how much productivity they're giving to the organization, how much they're being able to reach their potential, and really what they're adding to the overall uh, organization culture. So, so while um, employee well-being is in a bit of an alarming situation, we're also seeing something positive that's coming out of it. We're seeing, Saya Health has been seeing and working with many organizations uh, in Pakistan who are really stepping forward to take initiatives to cater to their employee well-being, to help to improve the employee well-being. Um, and so we actually invited a couple of our partners into this conversation today. HPL and Bayer, uh, they've you know, partnered with Saya Health over the last year to do employee assistance programs for their employees. So we would love to hear what their learnings are, what some of their challenges have been. Uh, and we've invited Dr. Kriti also to the conversation uh, as a global expert. So, so she can really add her insights into the conversation. So where can we go from here? So we've been working on this towards employee happiness and productivity for the last year? And where can we go now? What's the direction we should be taking? So let me introduce our panelists for today. And I apologize for the noise at the back. So firstly, we have Farah Sheikh. With 21 years of diverse banking experience, Farah has worked with Ernst & Young, Toronto Dominion Bank, and currently working with HBL as Head of HR and Learning and Development. She completed her MBA from Kaide Azam University and then pursued her MPhil in Development Studies from University of Cambridge. She has been able to achieve success in highly regulated and high pressure environments and is skilled at identifying solutions involving multiple stakeholders. So Just welcome, Farah. Thank you, thank you so much, Elise. excited to be here. Um, I'm not the head of HR and learning and development, but only the North regional head. So just a correction there. Sure, sure. And so the reason we wanted to invite Farah today was because firstly, HBL is one of the largest organizations in Pakistan and one of the most progressive. It has 16,000 employees um, and the EAP program at HBL is called Rapta. And I've really seen Farah take so much ownership of that program and advocate for employee well-being. So I felt that it would be really important to have her in this conversation. Thanks. And I look forward to being here. Next, we have Bilal. So Mohammed Bilal, currently working as head of HR operations at Bayer Pakistan Private Limited. As part of HR Solutions, he's leading HR operations team of individuals managing talent attraction, total rewards, organization management, SAP, company benefits and HR policies to provide support across all business divisions. As an HR enthusiast, Bilal has started his journey in HR 15 years ago at GSK. He was there for three years before he moved to Bayer. At Bayer, his contributions have been highlighted across multiple projects like policy harmonization, acquisitions, entity mergers, and various other assignments. So being a multinational, um, Bayer is a multinational, and so each of uh, the countries that it operates in has their own uh, EAP provider. They have their own employee well-being initiatives. And Bilal has been involved and he's been like really witnessing all of these changes and these programs take place on ground. So I thought, again, his perspective would be really interesting to add to this conversation. So 
Welcome, Bilal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Glad to be invited here. And then last, but definitely not the least, we have Dr. Kriti Jain. She's based in Madrid, a 2019 Thinkers 50 nominee, a management expert who works with global business leaders and policymakers on topics of leadership, organizational culture, and decision-making. She's a tenured professor at IE Business School in Spain, a PhD from INSEAD in behavioral decision-making, <clears throat> she has worked as a consultant with McKinsey and Co. and has been published by the Harvard Business Review on her article detailing how subtle psychological interventions can be used to create an ethical organizational climate. Dr. Kriti has served as an advisor to SIA Health, and we're really excited to get her global and specialist um, opinion in the conversation. So welcome, Dr. Kriti. Thank you, Lise. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. So I'm not going to take any more time. I'm going to take the conversation over to you guys. Um, I'd like you to start off by telling us about the initiatives that you're taking to boost employee happiness and productivity. So Farah and Bilal, if you can speak to what's been going on at the companies that you're involved in. Dr. Kriti, if you could tell us about some global initiatives that have been taking place and some that you've been involved in as well. So, um, Dr. Kriti, would you like to start, actually? Yeah, I can start uh, the conversation. I think overall, uh, if you think about statistics globally, uh, even before the pandemic, I think there was this um, problem that most companies were facing that employees' engagement is very, very low. So if you look at Gallup survey, you look at any survey uh, at global levels across countries, the problem has been that 60-70% of employees typically would report that they are not engaged or they're not happy with the organization, et cetera. This got even worse. I think all of us have faced it um, during the pandemic, right? So now that we've had one and a half, two years of this pandemic, the numbers actually uh, tell us that uh, people got totally disconnected, felt isolated, working from home, right? So the uh, rates of, for example, mental health issues became a big deal. Um, 60 to 70% of employees actually, you know, in this year's Deloitte survey was telling us, uh, are reporting that they have constant anxiety and stress. And what's worse is the idea that um, around half of these Gen Z millennials who have uh, not been in office ever probably because they started working in this home hybrid work from home environment, they actually felt that companies are not being able to do enough for their well happiness, right? So the challenge has already been there. I think what made it even more challenging for most of us as we were observing was this idea that uh, there was performance anxiety that um, perhaps I'm going to lose my job because there were so many layoffs happening and cost cutting was happening across the board. And on top of it, a lot of people actually have gone through a lot of uh, existential crisis, questioning why are we doing what we are doing? Why should I be here? Should I be working with this company? Are the values of my company aligned with uh, the values of my, myself, right? So these kind of questions that come up with um, almost like midlife crisis, almost like chaos, uh, when chaos happens. So, so there have been these new challenges that have come up. Uh, what I would say is companies are trying hard to solve these problems, right? But, but we've never seen these problems before. These are new for all of us. So my understanding and interactions from a lot of different companies is that there is a lot of effort that is being put. At least these topics have come to the forefront. Earlier, we wouldn't be happy talking or we would be hesitating to talk about mental health, nutrition, importance of sleep. But now all of this, its impact on people's well-being and productivity in an organization, I think this has come as one of the biggest topics. Uh, and that to me is a positive sign. Great, great. And, and can you tell us about any specific initiatives that you've seen? 
So several companies, uh, I would say both at government level and corporate level have been trying to put in, uh, let's say, uh, training programs which are designed around how do you lead and manage people in a hybrid setting, in a work from home setting, right? So uh, I think ye, ye sabhi log, uh, they will relate to this idea that there have been a lot of people humne onboarding kari hai, who have never ever seen the office. We are actually leading and uh, designing work for people who have, we have never met. So there is, uh, I think a lot of companies have been approaching us, for example, in trying to help design, how should we create this connection between people and their work, connection between each other and connection with oneself, right? So this whole idea of uh, how do we connect people in this remote setting, especially in a hybrid setting where we know we are not going to go back to a full work from office uh, mode ever, right? Everybody has realized that there are benefits in working from home and this hybrid setting. So uh, there are training initiatives that I have seen. A lot more investment uh, is going in and uh, providing these opportunities where uh, online programs about uh, you know meditation and physical health exercises and trying to put people together even in that Zoom environment. So uh, we are in the right direction, but I think we have a long way to go. Right, right. So thank you for that. So more and more uh, employers or organizations are having conversations about topics that we were shying away from earlier, like nutrition, like sleep and things like that. And uh, another thing that I heard from you is um, even while they were working from home, being able to connect them to each other was something that was quite important. And so initiatives were taken to address these things. So thank you for that. Um, Bilal, would you like to speak next? Would you like to tell us about what Bayer has been doing? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Preeti, for the wonderful insight. But uh, we are talking about the happiness. You know, many people, you know, believe uh, basically the happiness is a destination to get to. But uh, at Bayer, we experience happiness is a destination. We get to get every single day, right? So uh, happiness is about create or help creating memories that are cherished. We at Bayer believes. In, in, in enhancing, I mean, employee experience, and that happens. That happens, and how it happens by providing, of course, an environment of our people who, who space, who, uh, as a company, we are providing where they are and can be the best, best version of themselves, right? And, and the challenge is, and uh, when can one be the best version of themselves? when they are happy, of course. So, uh, Alizi, you're talking about the initiatives. So the question, of course, the, here the question arises: what we are doing to make our employees happy. So what we have done in, you know, uh, we have practices and policies in place on, you know, flexible working hours, work from home policy, uh, child care allowances, daycare policies, Parental paternal leave is the one of the recent added uh, thing in our uh, practices. And you all aware the recent times of pandemic has made us learn. Uh, so that resulted is, is, you know, the caregiver leave. Being an employee, we employed, they all are eligible entitled for different kind of a leaves, privilege leave, casual leave. But uh, what about the immediate family? Jab aapki spouse, yeah, even when uh, your parents, to us time, uh, aapne jo parents hai, ya aapke spouse hai, ya koi bhi aapka immediate family members hai, how can you support? Jo, just time unko support required hai. Or we have learned, this, learned from pandemic as well. Aap family mein, aapki, oh, sorry, family members is uh, cheese mein muktala hoi. So what we have done, we have initiated the caregiver leave for loved ones, and uh, we have a uh, you know create medical uh, medical you know benefits for the immediate family members, and as well as parent, which 
of course, we are also uh, considering the pandemic situation, new medical challenges, which we have faced in last two years. So we have uh, kind of, a, you know, some improve, improvise our, you know, uh, medical facilities for immediate family. We have added the COVID thing. We have added the pre-COVID test. And uh, the last, of course, the mental health is a big thing. Mental health support via, you know, what we have done. We have conducted a awareness session, engagement activities, right? So uh, overall, I would say be very well defined what's in it for me, for our employees. So this is what I believe. Thank you so much, Bilal. Thank you for sharing uh, those insights. Um, yes, I've actually seen this myself. Bayer is one of the few companies that we work with that's actually extended their EAP services to family members also. But I think your family members' workshops be attend. So of course, the employee's well-being is very closely tied into how the family members are doing. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Para, over to you. Thank you, Lisa. So um, for HPL, I believe you know the number of initiatives that we have ongoing are multiple. So I'll start off and I perhaps will touch on a few. I'll start off with the, some of the support uh, that we provided to our employees during the pandemic and uh, to handle the, uh, all the stuff that's happening around COVID. And I'm quite excited to say that there've been a number of generous and innovative uh, ways that we've seen implemented at HPL uh, to support their staff, starting off with, um, you know, uh, an MOU was signed with uh, one of the labs to conduct free testing, um, PCR plus, as well as antibody. And this is not just to the employees, but also to the family members. Um, Interest-free loans uh, provided if you have uh, someone who's sick within uh, the family and you need money right away. Um, we were the first to provide uh, vaccination to the employees when Sputnik came around. And then there have been various vaccination drives and also, interestingly, drive-through facilities for vaccination. Um, and as Bilal and uh, Kriti uh, mentioned, this increasing um, sort of stress which is which was added across the board for COVID and so uh, counseling sessions uh, were made available uh, to the employees um, as well as ongoing workshops to handle the stress particularly so the topics have been very interesting and varied um, there's been stress management there's been art therapy there has been uh, meditation uh, in addition to that, during that period, when we talked about, you know, how people felt um, not connected, um, I think one of the very innovative ways was that we introduced uh, gym uh, access to exercise classes and yoga through Zoom. And that was uh, across the country to every employee. And like you said, uh, we have uh, over 17,000 employees uh, within Pakistan. Um, there's also uh, been, you know, we, we believe that if you really look at it and um, research, I think what employees are looking for fulfillment, um, engagement and empowerment. And so um, now moving on to other initiatives, uh, the number one, which I found very strong at HPL is that any employee, they have access to a variety of channels to reach out to HR um, and to senior management if they have any problem that they want handled. Uh, so, and it's they're completely confidential. We have uh, lines such as the HR helpline, you've got whistleblow, you've also got anti-harassment. So the employees feel like their voices will be heard. And that's an ongoing facility and each one of these complaints I can tell you are um, looked at with detail and handled quite objectively. Um, every year there's an effort made to uh, have an employee engagement survey and that's also conducted by uh, an external uh, vendor Mercer who's very that's very well recognized uh, globally. And the learnings from that uh, are 
I've seen now since my association with the HPL are taken very seriously. So, okay, cool. So we'll also come to learnings in a moment. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that, Faya. Seems like you guys are really doing a lot. Um, both, all of you actually are really doing a lot. Um, is ka response kya hota hai? Do employees actually get involved? Do they actually, uh, you know, sign up for these services, these programs? Or um, what is the value that it's really adding in your experience? So, uh, Bilal, why don't you start? Uh, sure, Lizzie. Uh, Lizzie, uh, when we're talking about the you know, value addition, uh, what my experience, basically my experience is outstanding, honestly. First, you know, this kind of a, an initiative, it has provided a lens to understand how small or big things create impact, right? And, uh, you know, uh, certainly bring us closer to enhance value proposition. And even, uh, uh, I would say clearly, uh, having happy employee is not a bonus. It's a necessity for every uh, successful workstation or organization or you can see a workplace. Right. Um, any examples of, uh, or any numbers of how much employees actually take the service on? Um, how many people participate? Anything like that. So we can go to Farah and then if you have anything you can add on so alicia i think that is one of the challenges mm -hmm. uh, i think there is there is engagement people do sign up uh, but they're not numbers as much as you would like to see and it also varies from region to region uh, where there is more acceptability and then there are regions where there isn't though we have been surprised for example you might expect that in peshawar maybe people are um, sort of more hesitant talking about mental health. And you'd be surprised that there are people and they are quite open about it and uh, quite aware and sort of receptive to those concepts. Uh, but Karachi, Islamabad, Lahore, you will see people signing up for workshops, uh, having more awareness. They understand the language, the sort of what therapy can do for them or the benefit. Uh, we've had people ask if they can um, do marriage counseling, if they can have their kids, uh, um, if they're dealing with adolescent kids and their issues, if they can have them attend. And we've had lots of people uh, sort of join into the workshops with their families. So I think we can't actually say that it's across the board the same experience, but there is a variety of it. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to see more people sign up and despite the number of sort of awareness and communications we send out within the organization, I, would, I still sort of struggle to see those numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, that's, um, that's a challenge that you've highlighted, right? So how do we reach uh, people who are living in places where there maybe isn't so much awareness and acceptability? So, so thank you for pointing that out. Um, Dr. Kriti, would you like to share what value do such initiatives add? So I think first, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Bilal and Farah because it's really heart heartwarming to see the initiatives that have been taken and uh, that there is so much work going behind the scenes uh, to keep the employees well motivated and happy, right? So especially because the times have been tough. I think uh, I totally resonate with what Farah has also been saying. That's what something we've been observing globally, right? That uh, initially there was a lot of um, excitement when pandemic just hit. There was a lot of excitement about enrolling for these programs and Zoom workshops, even things like baking. Everybody was cooking and baking new dishes, right? So there was a lot of emphasis on that. But um, the interest has waned somewhere. And also I think uh, it is also probably a signal of burnout itself. The burnout has been ongoing for a lot of people. And uh, maybe it is also the sign that these were short-term benefits and what do we have to do in the long run, right? So um, 
some examples I might want to just share here. Just work from home uh, wasn't everybody's cup of tea, uh, right? And now, even when we might move to a hybrid setting, there are a lot of people uh, who like to keep their work life and private life separate. They like to work eight hours in office and come home and do their uh, sports or spend time with family and things like that. But that has totally been disruptive. So it seems that most of us have been working 24 hours uh, or at least online and be visible 24 hours because there was a lot of pressure um, from the managers to be visible. Uh, now that I don't see anybody in the office, um, I feel like I uh, don't know what who's doing what. There was also the, the other side where people felt that they were being micromanaged. And there was a lot of pressure to prove yourself, to be visible, to be 24 seven. So these initiatives are there, but on the other hand, we also have to address these culture challenges, right? Like how do I make sure that there is enough trust between people that we are not, ending up micromanaging. Everybody, I think uh, Bilal and Farah said, everybody wants flexibility now, empowerment. But are they ready for that? Uh, uh, people and manage, employees who haven't been in the office ever, they don't know what the culture of HBL looks like. They don't know the culture of where and how do it's, there's a risk of diluting that culture and how can I empower people who have no clue how we do things out here? So I think, um, Yes, these initiatives will uh, have helped and they did help in the short term, but I think long run may we have to address the larger challenges if we are going to be in a hybrid setup or uh, some people might wa be working from home full time. So how do I keep that connection, that motivation uh, continue? Right, right. I think um, that's some really interesting and important insight. So in the long term, what can we do, right? And people may, might be seeing some of these initiatives as more short term and or they could, their lack of attendance could be reflective of their burnout as well. So going forward, what can we do? And um, how can we empower our employees in a way that they're actually ready for? What are some other challenges uh, that you all have seen? is one that I have, which is um, making counseling services available uh, to everyone. I think, uh, I, as you know, I'm a big believer that actually talking to a trained uh, professional can, uh, can, can really change the way you address uh, the situation because uh, sometimes you just don't take what your family and friends say as seriously. Um, the the, no matter how much you try and convince the employees, they still have doubt that this is a confidential service. And this could have repercussions on their um, performance uh, appraisal and, or, or you know, the manager finding out. So I think getting them to sort of feel that trust around uh, EAP services as yet, um, I think that's lacking. And just awareness, awareness of the, sub, of the subject of mental health and awareness. And, um, what, you know, talking to a trained uh, therapist can do for them. Those are some of the challenges that I've seen. Right, right. So while we have seen, um, you know, so globally, I think about three to 8% of an organization's employees will actually sign up for EAP services. And in Pakistan, we've seen a higher percentage signing up. But regardless of that, there are still, uh, you know, a lot of people who are hesitant. Um, maybe their trust has been broken in the past or they've seen what the culture is um, around organizations uh, in general. And there is this distrust that confidential rahegi, even though we are going to a professional, even though we are going to a third party provider that's not giving any information back to our employer. But there is still hesitation. Hai. So anything else? Yes, uh, when we're talking about, you know, as Farah mentioned, uh, hum jis ka hai, you know, in our society, when we are talking about the mental health, you know, it is considered as a taboo, stigma, you know, nobody, it, it's really difficult to accept someone that you have mental health. Ki hai. 
So <laughs> being an organized through so what we did, so we need to you know uh, create more awareness around this topic to you know uh, normalize it. So we can encourage people to reach out to mental health resources. Nobody knows what is mental health. So uh, we need to, uh, as mentioned, we need to more focus on this area, uh, uh, maximize the you know uh, strength of awareness session of mental health so people can understand. Sometimes, as for I mentioned, it's a geographical issues, language issue, somebody sitting in Peshawar, somebody sitting in Lahore. So, it's like a little bit challenge. And the first thing we need to do is we need to work on it so people come out from, you know, that taboo ke us stigma se wo bahar nikal kar hai. This is what I believe. I think if I can add Thank to uh, Bilal and Farah's point, uh, the other thing specifically about mental health that I have witnessed is mm -hmm. uh, still in the developing side of the world, ki hamara, especially in the subcontinent area, there is still an idea, ek to stigma hai definitely. The mm -hmm. other idea is that maybe these are things that you have to worry about only, only the rich worry about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this idea that, oh, this is a, like a esoteric idea or a mental health. Abhi toh hum uh, pehle apna kaam kar lein, pehle apna uh, earning kar lein. Uske baad hi we will talk about this mental health. So mm -hmm. we have to get to that idea ki actually ye starting point hona chahiye for the conversation that mental health is good. Then we have, it's, it's about you'll do well, you'll have more money, you'll be more productive, etc. So I think that's the other challenge. It's stigma is there, but that it's not just, uh, it's for, it's a topic for everybody, not just for the rich and for the, it's not a luxury topic. Hmm. Right, right. I think that's a, that's a really important point. Because we keep it on a very low priority. We think that our job is more important, our physical health is more important, our children's education is more important. I, I come last. Don't don't worry about me. Um, you, you know, I can't. See, I don't... Right? You can't see it. You can't see the jumble in your head. You can't see if things are bothering you or you have thoughts coming in. So mm -hmm. it is challenging for people to kind of address that and say, okay, I really need mm -hmm. to do something about that. So yeah. 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 So so I guess moving to the next part of the conversation, how can we um you know, as employers, as consultants, as individuals, how can we um, give this information across? Ke aapki, aapki mental health, not just your mental health, but your overall well-being is directly correlated to your productivity. How do we uh, create access and raise awareness for people who are living around the country where access and awareness is, re is less? Of course, online mediums is one way that we've addressed it, but what, what is it that we still need to do? Um, anybody can go ahead first. I guess from, uh, if I think about it, I think there's a number of things. One is perhaps having role models within the organizations who are comfortable talking about um, something that they're dealt with. Um, so, you know, having a face to it, like I remember in one of my previous organizations, um, someone very senior talked about how, how their mother had getting Alzheimer's and them dealing with it had had an effect. But then you now had a face of someone senior acceptable talking about it, you know, addressing it head on. Um, and after they had that talk, um, we, we actually learned that a lot of people were now openly talking about it among themselves and with their uh, peers and groups and departments. And I think overall socially now I see, you know, I think dramas that you see and sort of what's represented on TV uh, begins to be getting more acceptable. So I am seeing this topic being addressed now more in mainstream uh, shows and you see more articles around it. Um, I guess we could there was a time, COVID unfortunately has made it more challenging where 
you know, you would um, have people get together for a, in a social setting, go out and watch a, a play together. Um, and so, you know, if that became something that, that helps people have a discussion afterwards. Uh, we've lost the water cooler chats. Uh, that could be one of the topics. I think this year uh, at HPL, we had activities around mental health awareness and the world mental health, which has never happened before. So I think that also sparked some conversations. Thank you. Would anybody else like to add? Yes, I would like to add here, Alizi, what we have done in October, we have celebrated, you know, uh, mental health uh, week or uh, even we as a company, we have celebrated whole month, you know, to uh, spread the awareness via different flyers, you know, we have conducted a awareness session. And what people think, Julie, misconceptions, or even I had already you know, discussed that the stigma or a taboo hai. Initially, one more example I would like to share. When, when somebody enrolled in, you know, in EAP, whatever, EAP ke saath wo jab enrolled hota hai, so the first concern is, you know, uh, this person is confidentiality. So I will talk about something or family discuss karunga. Might be ye disclose na ho jai. So in that case, we as an, you know, uh, leaders or we as a company representative, we have to make sure that ki aap jo bhi information via we in the session or different platforms se de jai, to is cheez ko up communicate karke make, take, uh, make sure kare, low take, so that people, people can move and utilize these kind of services for the you know betterment of their mental health. So uh, this is the uh, I think uh, main priority which we have you know uh, imposed in our organization or in our you know daily conversation. Sure, sure. So, you are saying that more communication basically okay. is the solution. More conversations. You um, have the Mental Health Awareness Week mein, uh, screen savers the, that we helped you develop. Screen savers yeah. about mental health for employees. I thought that was a really nice, really mm. nice idea. Creative. Mm. And maybe um, we can have more communications like this for employees who are not sitting at their desks all day. Uh, I think the desks is a really great idea also, but maybe um, employees who are out working in banks, working on the fields, uh, mm -hmm. how can we get some communications to them? So I think that that's something we can think about more. Um, Dr. Kriti, is there any uh, behavior change uh, that we can bring about? Are, are there any, any behavior change initiatives that you know of? Just, uh, when I was listening to Farah and Bilal and also hearing this idea that our communication as uh, people who lead these EAP programs uh, is there and should be there and more and more. I think the other side is also true, which is um, the idea that the change will come from the people themselves. So we can tell that we have these EAPs available and you can, you can come and talk to our counselors who are confidential, etc. But I think a large part of the work has to be coming from the employees, people themselves. So they need to visualize for themselves what their life can be without the stress and anxiety. Because a lot of us have lived through a very, in general, live a very stressful life. So we perhaps don't even know how our life can be without that stress. So visualization is needed. Small exercises for them to make themselves aware that journaling how do i make sense of the emotions that i feel like a lot of times this i've noticed this and especially uh, if i may dare to say with men that they don't know how to verbalize their emotions or they don't even uh, uh, feel confident they feel it like a sign of weakness Ke main apne emotions ko express karu, that this is something that i fear this is something that i am uh, worried about so uh, getting them into the small habits of like journaling noting down what is what they are going through uh, even before reaching the counselor because 
through that self awareness activities they will realize that okay my life can be better i might need some help external support and here is my external support so those are the behavioral change when we say like behavioral change has to come from the person themselves isi tarike se uh, there are now i'm seeing a lot of companies have um, third party uh, initiatives where there are apps installed jisme ki there are these small moments one or two minutes of breathing exercises that you can have during the day so the resources are available but how do i put those into my daily life as an employee is the challenge so uh, that is something that needs to come uh, from the employees themselves and i think to faraz point role models are important if leaders themselves say that well this is something that i am doing maybe this will be beneficial for you i think stigma will go away right so uh, before coming into a meeting especially in a zoom meeting right we straight away come to a meeting and just start talking about the actions that mm-hmm. need to be taken and the topics of the day just two three minutes the leader needs to figure out uh, mm-hmm. how do i talk and ask people how are you what's happening on a scale of 1 to 5 it can be as simple as that on a scale of 1 to 5 how happy are you feeling today or how okay are you and saying that and saying okay today i feel a little low or maybe i need to just step back a little bit and making it easy for other people to be able to express in that environment i think is is really important absolutely i think that's very very important i think uh, those are some really good examples of how we can model so um, bringing in how are you doing into the conversations even in meetings and also talking about your own experiences using services so i i remember fara did do that in one workshop um, and i think it really helped break the stigma so i think that's always a great idea to have role models stepping forward and uh, making it more normalized so uh, i would like to kind of uh, open up the floor for any questions that might be coming in so if anybody wants to write any questions in the comment box on facebook we are happy to take those questions i had a um, question for kriti actually you just talked about you know if i say hey i'm feeling a little low how are you guys i think one of the challenge and this is somewhere where i think again training comes into play but a difficult one like there's some who just want to talk about how low they're feeling or what's going on you know mm-hmm. the whole conversation can go a little astray and if the manager isn't um hasn't dealt with that before they they don't know when to sort of intervene and should they intervene or should they not i think it's a difficult balance to strike especially because of all that we're dealing with right now so uh, i've had managers wanting to broach this subject but scared to because it could turn into a whining session mm-hmm. and so how do you manage that kriti do you have any strategies for that yeah so i think uh, so i totally agree with you just the experience that you have about um, your managers i think we are seeing a lot of demand at the moment about uh, leadership at distance kind of programs how do i change my leadership skills that work before in the past in a face to face environment to this hybrid uh, remote environment but uh, so that has this element right like how do i um, ask people show that i care for them but at the same time it doesn't become like a whining session or actually a lot of leaders and managers them, themselves say that they go through this almost like compassion burnout kitna care you know like at some point how much care can i show because at some point i need to do a little bit of self care as well uh if i am just i have seen a lot of managers go above and beyond for helping people out and especially during the pandemic but usme they have lost their own selves right they have gone through the burnout so i think that that is a huge challenge and uh, that needs training talking to each other within the leadership community as well like what are some strategies that are working for them not working for them so yeah yeah just adding on to that um i was actually working with a manager today who again very similar situation i think there was a um, someone in the organization who was showing that they were really unwell and now this manager didn't know 
what's her domain, how much can she ask, how much she can say, well, how could she be supportive? So there are um, trainings that we do and can do for uh, line managers and others in the organization on how they can listen and how they can hold the other. And I think when you start to introduce well-being initiatives and you really open up your employees to start talking about the stuff, so then people do start talking. And then you need to also be prepared and you also need to know how to listen or manage the situation. Um, and one very practical uh, exercise that you know Farah, that you could do to contain the conversation. So maybe when there's a meeting or a group discussion, just saying, how is everyone doing? Can we go around and say how we're doing in just one sentence or one word? Mm -hmm. so, so that limits it. It doesn't take away the time from the meeting itself, um, but it makes it more personalized. I think here, Alize, uh, basically uh, what I believe, uh, it's not a process. It's a mindset and you know, it takes time to grab. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from someone saying, how about introducing a meeting day where employees can just talk about their day, week, and what's new in their lives? I think this comment has come in um, when we talked about there's not enough connection amongst uh, employees. So is this something you think that's realistic? Would you want to entertain such an idea? So okay. I can start this conversation if it's okay. Uh, I have seen actually this idea being uh, Im uh, implemented. So uh, yeah, we do have some, some companies, some teams, uh, they have this morning check-ins where they are discussing how just how everybody's feeling and very quickly going to the to-dos and the tasks and activities of the day. But then there are also companies who are doing these Friday, Thursday events where it's uh, not work, just one hour of coming together, maybe with some topic about uh, what is it that they're learning new or how their week is going, how things are, uh, even people playing some digital games, online games, et cetera, in that uh, pandemic era, right? So this, this works. And I think this addresses to uh, the Farah's question also that you can have a separate space where you talk about life in general, which, is separate from your work and so it doesn't get mixed up uh, so that's a that's a beautiful idea yeah but uh, if you could also speak a little bit to what value does it add for 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 you know whoever it may not be that obvious to yeah i think so uh, bilal had said that i think at the beginning that uh, we are talking about employee experience right uh, overall there has been a lot of generally a lot of conversation around customer experience and we need to be customer is the king and we need to take care of them. But now I think there is no doubt that companies, leaders, everybody sees the value that you have to take care of employees. The moment you take care of your employees, customers will be taken care of them automatically. So the, it doesn't, it, you don't have to even talk about customer experience and worry about that if you're doing your employee experience very well. So this is the idea, right? Like if you are just keeping the space nice, pleasant, productive for the employees, so things will be working well. So with these initiatives, I think what's happening is that uh, the human, human element is coming back, right? It's not just another, we employees are not just another resource that needs to be deployed and used, but it's, we are humans after all. And that element comes back from these conversations. So I think automatically, if I feel that I'm being listened to, I'm being taken care of, my loyalty will increase. My commitment will increase. My engagement will increase. Uh, and automatically is going to transmit into better profits, more productivity, et cetera. Exactly. So it goes back to employee satisfaction, employee retention. Um, there's a lot of competition these days. So it really, and I really like what you said that it humanizes, it's bringing the human element back. Um, because I think there is a lot of disillusionment that at some point does come up 
as an employee ke you know am i just a cog in the machine or you know how important am i to my organization so so this addresses that issue uh the person who made the this comment said my organization implements this so we play games and we just talk about ourselves and it lightens up um we have one more question how to deal with someone you report to who keeps giving you the impression that you don't know enough so this is a very particular and specific question um but i think issues like this come up all the time right uh, i think uh, like in the workshops that we've been doing this is what we some of the themes that we see are uh, pressure performing under pressure which can be a good thing also and it can be too much sometimes um having difficulty sometimes clashing with different personalities in your team um having you know dependency on another person's output uh, so you being then accountable for someone else which can be tricky uh, of course like short tight tight deadlines um what else um difficult people in the workplace in the team i think these are some things that we you know critical feedback not enough praise these are some things that people do talk about so if anybody has any um suggestions around this um, but i believe it's not suddenly happen right if you have you know proper plan proper you know check ins with your manager timely once you review uh, you know whole year performance and everything agar uske baad bhi if you are facing the challenge you should you know uh, uh, go up the top to usme aap baat kare और उसमें पूरी कॉन्वर्जेशन आपके पास पूरी एक बिल्ड कर सकते हैं कि व्हाट एग्जैक्टली यू आर फेसिंग और आपके पास क्या चैलेंजेस है तो यू कैन फिगर इट आउट ये स्टेटमेंट यू नो जो मैंने एग्जैक्टली वही बात की कि ये वैली ये आपको नहीं मिल जाता कि यार ऐसा है कोर्स इसके पीछे जो पूरा एक बैक एंड है यू नीड टू रिव्यू यू नीड टू रिविजिट और फोकस एंड यू विल यू नो आंसर आपके पास ही है इसके अंदर एंड यू विल इजीली यू नो एक्सप्लोर द ऑप्शंस कि अब मुझे कौन सी डायरेक्शन पर जाना चाहिए सो अम या गो अहेड आई आई वाज जस्ट गोइंग टू से आई थिंक द एम्प्लॉई मैनेजर रिलेशनशिप इज अ टू वे स्ट्रीट um इट्स नॉट जस्ट द मैनेजर एज कृति सेड यू नो देयर इज दैट कंपैशन बर्न आउट एज़ वेल वी वी sort of have um because maybe there hasn't been as much talk or awareness as yet but in terms of the employee also has certain responsibilities towards developing this relationship and taking it to the next level it's not only the manager's responsibility and i don't think we still have that much sort of i think there's lack of training there's lack of awareness of this um you know put your head down keep working you'll get recognized don't work on that communication relationship aspect so those are aspects i think when you become sort of just aware of hey i can actually reach out to my manager and set up a meeting uh because i want to talk about these three four things um uh, kind of take control of the relationship yourself as well instead of just expecting the manager to make the first move i think that can go a long way and have uh, quite an impact would be my suggestion right so the so the relationship needs to be built both ways not just one way um and communication is important and uh, as bilal said ke there might be a history as well mm -hmm. to this whole thing um so something i've seen is that sometimes employees say that our managers don't really understand us they don't understand what we're going through it's you know it's quite similar to the parent child relationship like uh you know child feels that we are not understood by our parents the parents feels like they can't really get through to the children so i mean is there a role of a third party like someone like hr can they help uh can there be uh regular um performance feedback or feedback about your managers what what can we do in these situations So maybe so, I can start. Oh, sorry, Farah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, and I'll I, I'll talk about some of what the work HBL is doing around it. 
Okay. So uh, the point that I wanted to say here was uh, because you said parent-child relationship. I think there are so many different angles that are coming to the front now, especially with the new generation, the Gen Z, with the millennials and the older generation that are working together. This is kind of almost, there is, everybody feels a little bit misunderstood and threatened to, you know, the older generation, which is not digital savvy, kind of feels that uh, these Gen Z digital natives, I don't know what they are doing and how their way of thinking, their way of, uh, their expectations from what work should look like. Uh, they get bored very quickly and they uh, demand challenging work, new learning opportunities. The mindsets are different across generations. And so uh, so that's there. But as I think coming back to the point that we were just discussing before, the onus is on both sides to be making that conversation and scheduling a, uh, from time to time maybe, but definitely at the start of a relationship what are my work styles? What is, as a manager, what am I expecting? Am I expecting regular updates, sharing your calendar with my calendar so that I know where you are, what you are, or am I a verbal person versus uh, a written memo person? So these small things uh, can actually create a lot of disasters and uh, mis mismanagement of expectations. So there, that role of HR comes super important because making those conversations go, how do I structure those conversations around what is my preferred work style? What hours do I work? I'll just give you very quickly an example. There are uh, some people who, managers who uh, actually shared this with me at some point that their employees working from home would want to go for an exercise gym schedule at 10 in the morning. Uh, and it was very different, difficult for this manager to even understand why that is happening. But because maybe these people were working, getting up at five in the morning and working uh, until nine, half of their work is done, right? And so how do I adapt to these new expectations? Uh, I think is something that has is going to be the role of HR uh, in making those conversations. Okay. So, so actually totally in line with what Preeti was saying, um, millennials, uh, there is a generational gap. We've seen that we've had situations where um, you've had sort of um, the millennials joining and leaving the organization fairly soon because their manager and them did not have a good communication or could come to the same expectation. They were just speaking a different language. And so we have a millennial council in place now where you get together on a regular basis and listen to the millennials, what is it that they want and what kind of a work environment do they want? Um, and also get you know, new innovative ideas from them. Um, another very interesting initiative that we have is reverse mentoring. So senior leadership team actually have been paired with a millennial and they're their coach um, and give them insights into what, you know, how, what the current stuff that they're interested in, or even, uh, you know, digital savviness and so on. And it's interesting, we're not, you know, a lot of the people are just not aware of the platform, they're not as familiar. Um, there's also regular feedback mechanism. So for, for the top layer and the second layer, now uh, they've implemented, um, it's confidential, feedback being sent to the manager. So a survey being done by the all the direct reports, um, like I I would in my entire group um, sends in comments about our boss. Uh, luckily, it's again confidential completely, so you feel very sort of um, you you feel heard. So there's a number of activities being done at the organization, which I think is great. Amazing. So there's one last question. Um, I have some background noise, so I'm just going to put it in chat and maybe one of you can pick it up.
Of course. I mean, the question is, uh, isn't there a boundary between personal and professional? I feel that we can't always have open conversations at work, especially if it's a toxic work environment. Um, I'm sorry if someone is experiencing toxic work environment because it, it really does take its uh, toll. I mean, we spend more time uh, at work than we do at home or being involved with work. So uh, yes, in, in such an environment, of course, you'd find it difficult to bring your entire self or share your entire self. But I hope there is someone within the organization or a manager that would uh, come around and address that. Anybody else want to add? And if I might just say here, if it's a, definitely, if it's, yes, I understand the point that you don't want to bring your personal life into professional life. But that is where I think the third party providers can play a role because uh, they are not in that sense. If you are, are struggling on your personal front, but that does impact your professional life. Right. So or your professional productivity and um, you need to find a way to address that personal challenge. And maybe you are not very feeling safe in talking to your manager about it, but that's exactly where this third party providers will be in play, right? So I don't know, uh, Aliza, you want to share uh, how, how you work on that front? Sure, sure. So Saya so Health functions as a third party where the EAP provider, uh, which means that um, we give a portal to the employees and the employees use, so each company has their own separate uh, portal and using their, empl uh, their uh, employee email addresses, like their organization email addresses, they um, sign in and they browse a therapist and they take a counseling session with the therapist. It's completely confidential. So the employer um, gets reports on how much usage has been done at the end of the month. Uh, annually it gets overall themes that have come up so that you can take those into account and work on them, uh, you know, see where you need to be better, where does the employer need to be better in terms of atmosphere, et cetera. Um, but there's no reporting about who is using uh, the services at all. And, um, the, you know, even Saya Health does not know what is being talked about in these counseling sessions. It's completely confidential between the counselor and the employee. And that's really the tenet of um, the foundation of counseling, that it has to be completely confidential. Um, yeah, so, so um, just kind of uh, also wrapping up which, or summarizing what Farah and uh, Kriti has said, and what we've been saying in this entire conversation to answer that question, um, is there a boundary between personal and professional? Uh, yes, there is a boundary, but I think um, where does that boundary stand is what we need to figure out, right? Do we want to <clears throat> completely leave all of our self at home and not bring it into the workplace? Then are we really being human in the workplace? Which was the point that, um, Preeti made. And the other thing is that, you know, the more that we feel we can be comfortable in our organization, the more that we feel that we are seen for what we're bringing in, uh, our, our achievements are acknowledged, our efforts are recognized. I think the more um, we will feel satisfied and the more we will be productive. Uh, so I hope that, you know, helps contextualize what your question was. Um, and I want to acknowledge your feedback also, Dr. Preeti. You said that um, managers setting expectations with their employees can go a really long way. Um, I think that's a really good uh, suggestion. And But I think the millennial committee is such an interesting idea. And I love the idea of matching uh, seniors to millennials so that there can be some cross-generational learnings. Um, so yeah, this has been a really interesting conversation. I feel like we're just getting into the, you know, meatier parts of it. So I guess it's important to continue having conversations like this um, to create this awareness and to exchange ideas. So are there any final comments from the panelists before we close today?
Oh, it's uh, super exciting to be part of this conversation. You know, uh, I was reading some articles where it says that, you know, for 20, the next year, the uh, Preeti's already touched upon that. The most important thing for the employers is employee engagement. And so being able to, you know, and at, being at an organization where it's not just uh, words, but they're actually living and walking the talk, uh, I'm quite excited. And uh, thank you so much for having me as part of the panel. All right. Thank you for being here. Okay, so an easy, easy way forward, you know, uh, uh, a focus is on, you know, we are talking about the mental health and all this stuff. So focus on, uh, of course, mental well-being and uh, IND, inclusion and diversity, basically uh, is the journey. And we are uh, celebrating each day. And uh, you know, guys, as you are aware, today we are celebrating this very day, uh, International Day of Person with disabil Disabilities. I think we should uh, also consider through this lens. So, uh, conclusion is uh, I really enjoyed the session. And uh, overall, uh, being in corporate and being an organization, uh, I think we should promote and give ease to our employees to make them happy. Thank you, Bilal. Yeah, and from my side, uh, I just first want to congratulate Saya Health for uh, hosting this discussion. I think that's already like a very good starting point uh, on, as we said, on awareness and openly talking about issues. And then uh, also, it was really heartwarming to hear uh, that, you know, these initiatives have been taken already by uh, companies. So you're leading uh, Farah and Bilal to the show on how we can do this uh, in a, in a, in an excellent format, uh, in in a culture, in a system where it's not easy to talk about these topics. So breaking the stigmas and leading the show on that front, I think it's super, super uh, amazing effort that you're doing. Um, and I, from my point of view, I think we just have to continue to experiment because these are some new challenges for all of us, right? So uh, just having an experimental mindset, experimenting with small changes and seeing how far they are going or not going and just getting the employees on board with these uh, initiatives, I think, uh, uh, would go a long way. So again, thank you, uh, Alize, for hosting this for all, all of us. No, thank you, Dr. Preeti. I think, um, you know, given your uh, expert opinion, given your global experiences, I think it really validates what we're doing here because it's very new here in Pakistan and it's encouraging to hear from you. Um, so, yeah, thank you. for Really, thank you for taking our time and being here. And thank you, Farah and Bilal, for taking our time and, you know, giving your voice to this conversation. I'm excited to take some of these learnings back and implement them with you guys. So, and thank you to our audience. Um, we've gone a bit over time, but thank you for your interesting questions that I've added to the discussion. And hopefully we'll have some more conversations like these. If you guys have any feedback, if you have any recommendations for topics in the future, do uh, send us a message on Saya Health. Thank you. Have a good evening and a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.